So today we're doing something a little bit different. It's a little bit of an experiment, a little bit of a, a deep dive into the flawed trade system and MLB the show. What we're going to do is we're going to turn the trade setting all the way up and we're just going to see what trades happen. I'm not going to try to rebuild a team. I'm not going to accept all the trades. I'm literally just going to let CPU take over every team in the league and I want to see the crazy, stupid, ignorant stuff that happens with these trades because the whole trade logic was supposed to be improved this year and I feel like it is drastically drastically gotten worse so it's a little bit of an experiment a little bit of more of a it's a different type of video I just really want to see how bad trade logic is this year so let's let you know the CPU wreck havoc on the league and see what happens so hope you enjoy it if you do thumbs up down below subscribe to the channel if you're new and enjoy the content and of course Get in the comment section. Let me know some other weird things we could do in videos for MLB The Show. All right, so the only thing I'm going to do is ignore budgets is on just so that we can have more trades that happen. And I mean, I feel like, well, maybe we do two experiments. We'll do we'll do like one or two seasons with it on and maybe one or two seasons with it off. And then we'll do auto manage so we can let the CPU just go through and do whatever they want. So we'll start in spring training. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to the settings section and we're going to go to sliders and we're going to just trade frequency all the way up, which just means more trades happen. It doesn't necessarily mean, you know, the trades that happen are crazier. It just means that more trades are going to happen, which, okay, cool. And then actually let's, let's leave it at default. Let's leave it at default just to see what happens first off. And then maybe we can start to get a little bit crazy, maybe bump it up a bit and we'll just see what happens. We'll see what happens. So, yeah, basically what I want to do is I just want to see what trades happen. I don't care who gets traded. I don't care what the CPU does. I just want trades to happen. So we'll kind of break it down month by month just to kind of see and go through and we'll just do that. Wait, what happened there? All right, so we're in May. Let's go to transactions and let's see what's been completed because there's some crazy stuff that usually happens. So first one verdugo for reese hoskins and zach wheeler we got brandon belt for jorge polanco tyler wade for miguel sano luke maley okay so nothing too crazy just yet nothing too crazy just yet which kind of surprising but we're gonna have to take it month by month because usually transactions you know they do they, they reset but our first crazy trade that we're gonna have joey gallo for betances tommy wilson and Francisco Alvarez. I don't know about that one. I, I don't know about that one. Let, let's keep advancing. Let's get to the end of the month. And now let's go take a look at the other completed transactions that we have. So we had the Joey Gallo one. Excuse me. Garrett Hampson for Jason Dominguez. Okay. Okay. Makes, makes sense, right? Makes perfect sense. Makes perfect sense. Um, Carlos Rodon for Luis Toribio, Jeter Downs for a backup catcher. Jeter Downs is one of the top shortstop prospects in baseball. Okay, mm okay, mm Def definitely makes a lot of sense, right? For sure, for sure. All right, so that month is over. I mean, we're we're getting a little wild here. Uh, I mean, it's still kind of ridiculous, right? Like, I'm not expecting crazy, crazy. Josh Taylor, Michael Chavis for Whit Merrifield. Uh, it's not the worst trade I've seen. It definitely could have been worse, but I, I don't. I don't necessarily hate that one. That one's not too bad. So, transactions completed. Transactions, and we're back here for the trades. Guriel for JJ Blade and Yimi Garcia. Okay, maybe not too bad. Luplo for Tristan Casas. Eh, I don't know about that one. I don't know about that one at all. And then any other crazy things going on? Jared Walsh for... Mm, I don't know. Jared Walsh. What? And then we're back to the ones we've already seen. So, so far nothing too crazy, which is a little wild. Uh, Ryu for Rucker and Reginald Preciado. I feel like Ryu should be getting a little bit more than that. Kirby Yates for Valoria and Ben Hernandez. Okay. I don't even know if we're getting all the transactions, to be honest. Like, I feel like some of them are just not not showing up. So, Glasnow. Okay, hold on. Where was this one? Tyler Glasnow and Jose Alvarado for Alec Bohm. No, no, no. Tyler Glasnow for Alvarado and Bohm. 
that's a big trade right there. Where was my notification? Semyon for Rivas and Christopher Morel. Darren O'Day for Ross Stripling. Quintana for Brett Netzer. And any other any other trades that I missed? I feel like more trades are happening, and we're not just we're not getting any notifications. Uh, let's see. Any? I'm look. I want that crazy trade. Peralta for Jackson Reitz. Hedges for Mayers. And then we're back to kind of what we've already seen. So we're okay. So more trades are happening. Maybe we need to check every couple weeks now, because I feel like. Okay, here we go. Yankees acquire Loriano for Park, Schmidt, and Siegler. I mean, Teoscar Hernandez for Sterling Sharp, Jeremy De La Rosa, and Jacob Reinsmith. I, Jeremy De La Rosa, I know, is one of the top prospects in the Nationals organization. So I feel like, okay, that, that wasn't too bad. But, hmm. Hmm. Kyle Crick for Dylan Cease. I feel like a reliever for one of a, the better, you know, kind of pitchers in the White Sox rotation. Eh. Petit for Matthew Thompson. What else? Colome for Matt Hall and Cameron Cannon. Stevenson for Jared. No, 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 Mad Bum, I know it's definitely fallen off, so like, okay, whatever. Yarbrough for Telez and Robbie Ray. We've got Merrill Kelly for Johan Mieses. What else? And then I think we're back to where we were. Santana for Chaz Rowe. Galvis for Jimenez. Okay. <laughs> Whoa. Vlad Jr. for Asa Lacey and Bobby Witt Jr. I feel like that might be one of the most, like... Fair trades I've ever seen Vlad get, tr like, traded for. Asa Lacey and Bobby Witt Jr. for Vlad Jr.? And then Kluber for Merriweather. Vincent for Thad Ward. Rugned for Bassett. And then we're back to where we were. Okay. Okay, now we're now we're starting to see some action here. And then the last week, Giolito for Bo Bichette. And Steven Matz. I know Giolito is really good, but... I feel like a shortstop is a little a little bit more important than a starting pitcher, especially one of the top young shortstops in baseball. Don't get me wrong, Giolito, Cy Young caliber pitcher. Very, 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 very good pitcher. Very good pitcher. But for Bo Bichette, I feel like, yikes, Trent Christian back to the Brewers. For Luis Urias and Corey Ray, yikes, yikes. Wait, wait, wait. Trent Christian was traded for Urias. Wasn't wasn't that the trade? So they're just they just were like, I don't like Trent Grisham. Can you take him back? We'll take Urias back. Um, but I feel like now that's not really. A, uh, I don't know if that's a fair trade. And as the deadline approaches, let's finally take a look one more time and see what other trades happened. Miguel Amaya for Andrew Heaney, essentially. Yastrzemski for Hansen, Souza or Souza and Gonzalez. We've already talked about that, and then we're back to where we were. So. Overall, there were some pretty outlandish trades. The Jason Dominguez one being the one that really stuck out the most. Um, I guess we could skip like the last day and just see if anything else happened. Um, just to kind of see if we missed anything. Trevor Story for JT Jin, Pete Crow Armstrong, and Sherevi. Wait, Sh Shervin? Sh Shervien? Newton? Uh, 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 that's a lot for Trevor Story. Could Trevor Story go out and get that? Definitely. Definitely. Um, but, wow. Okay. All right. So, I feel like the trades were were a little crazy, right? Some crazy ones. We did have ignore budgets on last time. So, let's leave them on again. And then, this time, let's turn the the trade slider all the way up. And let's just, let's just see what happens. So, we're going to hop right into the regular season. And then, let's go to the settings sliders and then we'll turn it all the way up so there's that now wait let's confirm it yep cancel out let me double check that it saved because for some reason when we just loaded in it was all the way back but okay so now let's let's just let chaos ensue and let's see what happens so first month 
we're gonna probably see a lot more trades but obviously we weren't involved in any so completed trades and now we've got brazier for anduhar i know anduhar's value is pretty low right now any other big ones wander franco for jared walsh mm, i don't know about that one that one's a little wild i feel like that one definitely doesn't make any sense all right going through the rest of them brett gardner okay so again some pretty outlandish trades but uh man what is going on here why why are some of these okay why why did it, why does the cpu go wander franco and you know what a first baseman yeah that seems like a fair trade let's go ahead and do that completed let's see what else we got verdugo for class a and tristan mckenzie i mean i don't hate it i don't hate it i feel like verdugo's stock right now is through the roof um especially a center fielder really good fielding his bats pretty decent too class a is still trying to prove that you know he's a good reliever tristan mckenzie still kind of on the you know he's having good and bad starts here and there but like you know what i mean yeah, like i don't know i feel like that's an interesting one jay groom durbin, durbin feltman and connor wong for jacob stallings lind bloom for gettys jace fryer for yu chang panic for hudson jordan hicks for michael chavis i don't i, I mm. Jaron Duran for Petit. Again, man, the Red Sox must not like Jaron Duran, which I don't understand. But for a reliever, uh, just why would a top prospect go for a reliever? That's that's what I don't understand at all. And then going through the rest, um, you know, there's there's definitely some interesting one. You know, Alcantara for a catcher. We've got Zach Britton for Manny Pena. And then we're back to where we were. Okay, so, okay, things are starting to get a little crazier now. You know, we're starting to see some more wild trades here and there. And let's see, Josh Donaldson for Guriel and Gabriel Moreno, who I know has pretty decent potential. So that's an interesting one, especially for an aging player with a very high contract. Whit Merrifield for the Cubs, for Ian Happ and Jonathan Holder. If you're looking at real life, Ian Happ is struggling this year. He's also been injured a little bit. Jonathan Holder, I, I honestly think... The Cubs would have to give up a little bit more just with Whit Merrifield, but I don't know. I, that one's a little weird. In franchise, you know, Ian Happ's broken, and that doesn't make any sense, but, you know, real life, it's a little weird. Pablo Sandoval is traded. Glasnow for Josh Rojas and Alec Thomas. I feel like the Ra the Rays would get a little bit more. Like, Alec Thomas is, a, you know, one of the better prospects in the organization, but Josh Rojas, I feel like that those two players aren't enough for Glasnow. Corbin Carroll for Bobby Dahlbeck, essentially. Pineda for Kirk. <laughs> uh, okay. Reynaldo Lopez for Chad De La Guerra. Dan Winkler for Everson Pereira. Joe Adele for Josh Taylor. Don't get me wrong. Joe Adele had a rough year last year, right? Like, really tough season. But still, Joe Adele for Josh Taylor. All right, let's keep going. And then I think we might be caught up now. Looking at the rest. Fran Mill for Lazardo. Hmm. I don't know about that one and let's see what else santander for tanner hawk or hawk and loriano for david peterson and jd davis that's a big trade and then we're back to the verdugo trade so i mean jd martinez for i don't get me wrong don't get me wrong jd martinez fantastic hitter kills it very good hitter but aging jd martinez dh for the rest of his career vlad jr who's absolutely mashing in real life can still play first base for you he's only 22 23 years old come on mlb come on mlb come on joey gallo for you're essentially banking on keone cavaco being a very very good player in the bigs which he might be but for joey gallo i uh, Lucas Giolito for Brandon Lau and Hunter Strickland. Uh, I don't know about that one either. This is getting a little ridiculous. And what I'm seeing is just the trade logic is unbelievable. Sonny Gray for Valoria and Edward Olivares. Edwin Rios and Victor Gonzalez for Jake Cronenworth. I mean, this is... Um, Denilson Lamette for Rizzo Hayward and Ildemaro Vargas. Uh, what the Cubs take a pitcher which okay Cubs need pitching but the Padres don't need Hayward they don't need Rizzo 
and they don't well i guess they just traded cronenworth so they could use ildemaro vargas but they don't need rizzo they have hosmer on a very similar contract they have will myers and now jason hayward those are two players who are making around the same amount of money hayward makes a little bit more but that trade makes zero sense at all i do get you know the budgets is off but even even with budgets off how does that make sense to add another player of a similar rating and older than will myers that makes no sense uh cabrian hayes for jordan yamamoto yamamoto and jake mangum okay okay the, pff, uh, what 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 else we got here give, give me something crazier garrett mitchell who's a top prospect in the Brewers organization for Isaiah kind of left. Uh, okay. Uh, Mitch for Matt Dice and Deshaun Knowles. Mm, Wilson Ramos. Oh, you got to be kidding me. Yeah, I mean, oh boy. All right, what else we got here? We've already seen the Padres and the Cubs. Kyle Lewis for Drew Waters and Bryce Elder. Mm, you know, and then ryan yarbrough for marco luciano and casey schmidt i don't know marco luciano i feel like his his value is pretty high i don't know if ryan yarbrough is enough i feel like the giants kind of got screwed on that trade miguel cabrera got traded sean Manaya got traded and then the cronin war trade what else there's got to be another one Catel Marte for ramos ademan and cole rotorer that's a weird one i don't know how to take that one Bo bichette we've what? What? Bo Bichette for Bryce Wilson and Jesse Franklin? No, 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 no. Uh, Ryu for Deekman and Andrews? No. And then, let's see. Any any other just stupid trades? Just why would they do that? Um, Sean Murphy for Semyon Pearson and Teoscar Hernandez. I'm sorry, is Sean Murphy Mike Trout or something? What? <laughs> Unbelievable. 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 Oh, oh man. Oh, this is ridiculous. Un Unbelievable. Corey Lee and Sean Dubin. Dubin for Matt Olson. Kiermaier for Wilkerman. Okay, so like, I know Kiermaier is like, whatever. Like, he just doesn't hit for a good average, so that probably brings his value down. Let's see what else. Um, there's got to be more. Brendan Rodgers. Mm, we've seen the Vlad trade. It was JD and Matt Barnes for Vlad. That still doesn't make it any better. Ed Howard, a top shortstop prospect for the Cubs for Kohei Arihara. Even though I know Ed Howard in real life is doing really, really bad right now. It's a tough start to his uh, professional career. Brandon Belt for Marwin. Garrett Hampson is valued extremely high for some reason. And I think we've seen the rest of the trade. So I think that's that's everything, right? I guess we can sim the last day just to see if anything else happened. Which, Luis Castillo for Jeter Downs and Nick York. And that was the last trade. Un Unreal. So that was with budgets off. Let's just do one experiment. Trade all the way up with uh, budgets normal. Like normal. And then let's kind of end it there because i'm already seeing ridiculous trades all right so ignore budgets off we'll leave everything as is we'll let the cpu handle it and um trade frequency i guess we could leave it on all the way just to kind of see just to see more trades because like just seeing more trades still shows the logic right it doesn't mean that like they're going out and the trades are crazier it just means that more trades are happening right they're just going out and making more trades so Let's just see what happens first month. J.D. Martinez for Patrick Corbin, Starling Castro, and Cody Wilson. I feel like the Red Sox are kind of getting screwed on that deal. What else do we got? First month, let's go take a little peek and see the completed trades. I mean, I could probably even go out there and show how flawed it is just by making trades myself. Glasnow for Casas and Whitlock. You got Zanino for... No, that's a terrible trade. That's a terrible trade. And those were the only trades that happened this month. Um, so obviously the budget being on definitely plays a big, big play into it. A uh, Ryu for Goldschmidt. That's a weird one. That's a weird one. I don't, I don't really understand that one. I don't really know why that trade would happen. 
it doesn't really make a lot of sense for either team to be honest but i don't know we've got rodone for slater cisneros okay reese mcguire for clint frazier i don't i mean yeah the yankees need catchers but i don't i don't really see why that makes sense gary sanchez for austin hayes <laughs> huh um what else mount castle for jordan montgomery Mm, what else? Guriel for Isbell and Nicky Lopez. And what else do we got here? Nate Pearson for Roberto Perez. Come on. Come on. Come on, MLB. In what world is Roberto Perez that highly rated? Don't get me wrong. One of the best defensive catchers in the league. But for like one of the top pitching prospects. And then on top of that, Danny Jansen. Who, yeah, but like... I just the trade just doesn't make sense. It just doesn't make sense. And then we've got Garrett Hampson for Jason Dominguez again. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sure. Why not? Let's just get repeat trades. Love to see it. And here we go. Now in June. I mean, it just it just seems the thing that I'm starting to notice is relievers seem to be overvalued, prospects undervalued. And I it just ah man. It just doesn't look good. It just doesn't look good at all. Um, Trey Mancini for Patrick Weigel. Let's see what else. Kevin Biggio for Danny Duffy. No. Fran Mill for Holder. Jonathan India for Davey Garcia. I feel like the Yankees aren't getting enough in that return. Um, Santander for Pereira. And then we're back to where we were. So last month this is probably where i'll even you know step in and get a little crazy with some trades kirby yates for eniel de los santos matt olsen for campusano gore and ornelas i feel like maybe that's not a terrible trade i feel like there would be some lower level prospects involved as well castillo for schmidt garrison garabito and elliot ramos mm. I don't know, man. These are these are some weird trades. I just don't know what to like. Ex like, I don't know. Trevor Story for Stott and Mick Abel or Abel. I mean, I still think the Rockies would need a little bit more to get that deal to go through. Giolito for Horner and Hap. Hmm. Okay. I don't. Know. These are weird, man. I don't. I don't know what to make of these anymore. There's just so much like craziness. Uh, Luciano for Tapia. I still think the Giants would need a little bit more. Ethan Small and Joe Gray for a uh, Kiner Falefa. Gonzalez for Asan Diaz and JJ Blade. Gonzalez is good, but JJ Blade? It seems like a lot. Mustakis is traded. Joe Adele for a backup catcher. Come on. What's, what, where's the logic in that one? Um, Semyon for Chafin and Jake Marisnik. And, I mean, I don't... It's just... It just doesn't look like there's like any logic in any of these trades like at all all right so let's finish with just a, a normal a normal one where we don't we don't mess with any settings right budgets normal everything's like left alone like we just we just let everything go uh we'll double check to make sure the trade setting or trade slider is untouched let's make sure it is boom perfect everything is is as is let's make sure okay so now let's just let's just go through and let's just see what happens because like yeah we've messed with the trade slider all the way up we've messed with the trade slider all the way up with the ignore budgets on so let's let's just see what happens and um i didn't even check to see what happened in the first month so let's go let's just let's just go and take a look here because yeah messing with the settings is definitely going to take an effect and they're definitely going to change up some things but like i'm already seeing Mike Zuzino traded for Orelvis Martinez, who's an A potential player, possibly maybe B potential player. Still shouldn't be happening there. Uh, Corbin Carroll for Clint Frazier. I'm not 100% sure about that one. And I'm, I'm looking at it. I don't, I'm, I'm still seeing trades that I'm just, just don't make sense, right? Like, obviously, these are going to be the ones that aren't as extreme, but like Hernan Perez for Brennan Davis one of the top prospects in the Cubs organization for a fringe MLB player doesn't make any sense at all to me and then through the month of June let's just continue to go obviously I'm using a different roster like writing rosters but that shouldn't change the logic right because everything's based on player overall player potential 
the contract, you know, like it just, why, why would, you know, a different roster change it up? So Zach Britton for Jake Room. I, let's see, what else do we got? I, I mean, even if like Garrett Cooper for Shedlong Jr., Renfro for Montgomery, Perez for Gonzalez, Miguel Rojas for Kurt Casale. So even with default like settings, yes, there are some crazy trades, not as outlandish. Like this one, okay, not too crazy. Trent Grisham is having a bad year. But like, I feel like the, the Mets are giving up a lot. Diaz, Lucchese, and Nimmo for Trent Grisham. I feel like that's, I feel like that's a lot. I feel like that is definitely a lot. You know, three quality MLB players for Trent Grisham. Don't get me wrong, Trent Grisham's a great player, but I feel like that's a lot. I feel like that's a lot. Brandon Lau for Whitlock, Netzer, and Jeter Downs. So again, I just feel like there, there's just some issues. Ryu for Libertor and Elledge. Kirby Yates for Joey Bart and Tyro Estrada. Why do the Blue Jays need another catcher? Jansen, McGuire, Kirk, Joey Bart. Why does that make sense? Why does that make sense? Um, and that's that's kind of the issue with it. There's just no logic behind the trades. It's not even that the trades are bad. There's just no logic behind them. Like four, four catchers? There, that makes no sense. You've got Yarborough. Okay. Wilson Contreras for Drew Waters and Alec Jackson. Alex Jackson. I don't feel like that's enough. You know? <laughs> I just don't. Uh, and also, why would the Cubs trade their top catcher when who's their backup? What was it? Austin Romine for two prospects. I mean, I, there are some rumors with the Cubs in real life, so maybe. Jared Kalanick, Margavichis, and Deloach for Glasnow. You've got Joe Adele for Oliver Drake. Come on. A Rosa Reina for Nolan Jones, Tanner Burns, and Jake Bowers. I guess Jared Kelly for Scope, Arihara for Fletcher, Kiermaier for Langliers and Schuster, Chirinos for Arouse, um, Frazier for Maciel and Salmons, Rio Ruiz for Baldwin, and then Yates and Lugo for Greg Holland, kind of Falefa for Sandias and Tristan Pompey. Any other? Okay, so the Orioles did trade away one of their catchers, Trey Mancini for Alejandro Kirk. But like overall, I just, I, like Alec Bone for Ahmed Rosario, come on. That that one makes no sense. Okay, so the, okay, they traded away two two catchers, Reese McGuire for Jose Suarez. But like, Alec, I, I'm still, I'm still not sold on like even the logic just making sense. Like Connor Wong for Frankie Montas. I, I'm just looking at this and it just, again it just doesn't make a lot of sense at all like some of these trades just they don't they don't line up right like they're just like why would they make this deal knowing that they kind of still need that player or they have a plethora of players in that position already so like michael walker for yolke but it's just yeah it just doesn't make a lot of sense to me obviously we still have one month left oh no that was that was the that was the month of july so we'll check the last day just to see if anything happened. But yeah, again, like, yeah, it was a quick one. Yeah, it was just a short little like, hey, what can we do to make this deal happen? But yeah, so now let's 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 hop into a couple trades where we try to make some deals happen with, you know, the trade logic just to kind of exploit it some more. But overall, I'm just I'm not sold on this trade logic. It just doesn't make any sense. All right. So let's let's try to let's try to fluke a couple trades here. So who's a player? that I feel like, you know, is definitely someone that shouldn't be too easy to get, right? Like, just one of the best players in the league, you know, we can go out there and just snag him pretty easily. So, hmm, let's use Jorge Mateo as a piece. And also let's throw in, let's throw in, what, Brian O'Grady? Okay, okay, and then, you know what? We can even throw in, you know, maybe a little backup catcher and, oh, maybe Kyle Overstreet. That's pretty close, right? Asturi Ruiz. That's still pretty close. Let's go to maybe a pitcher. Hmm. Who could we throw in here that would make this deal go through? Austin Adams for Trey Turner. Trey Turner is one of the best shortstops in the league. And you're telling me I can get him for Jorge Mateo, who is essentially just a, a pinch runner 
platoon, outfielder, infielder guy. Like, bat's not really there. Brian O'Grady, Austin Adams. You're telling me that's a trade that gets accepted? That doesn't make any sense. Like, the trade logic makes zero sense at all. Why is that a possibility? All right, so after that Trey Turner deal and, uh, yeah, just the Trey Turner deal, I kind of, like, like backed out of franchise because I was going to end the video there. But now I'm like... Let me, let me do a couple more. Let's go get a top prospect in Jared Kalanick. Super easy, right? It has to be, right? Let's let's go with Brian O'Grady and Jorge Mateo. Okay. And then we'll throw in Olivier Basabe. That, that shouldn't be that easy. Like, especially for a player who's one of the top prospects in baseball. Boom. Easy. All right, let's try for Jacob DeGrom. One of the best pitchers in baseball. Possibly the best pitcher in baseball. And yeah, 32 years old, so you probably get, what, the rest of his contract the next three years. But for those next three years, you're getting the best pitcher in baseball. For Tommy Pham, Luis Campusano, who, yeah, could potentially be a really good catcher. And then Mason Thompson. I feel like that's a little bit too easy. I feel like it's a little bit too easy. So there was one trade. Another trade I was looking at was Juan Soto. Um, definitely has a little bit more value in left field, but right field, we, we can kind of go with the same trade. And I was looking around, I was like, who could we, who could we throw in to get this deal done? And like Will Myers, Tommy Pham, and Luis Campusano, I feel like that actually helps you out. You're getting rid of a lot of contract. Like, yeah, you're, you're looking at it like, well, Tommy Pham's good. Campusano's going to be good. Will Myers is good, but like. Juan Soto? That that still just doesn't seem like a fair trade to me. I just I don't know. I'm I'm just really <laughs> Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Oh, there we go. We just we just stumbled on another one. Um I did simulate a like a month into this a couple months into the season, you can see 82 games. So about halfway through, just to see if like that changes trade logic a little bit, which it does. Um it definitely does. But uh, what no, don't don't do this. Don't do this. I mean, it just it just goes to show. It's it's broken. It just it doesn't work. It, it it's it's just not. It's just not even what it needs to be. It, it, it's not. It, it really is just not in a good place. So we're gonna leave it there. Sadly, that's just. It's just a broken, broken feature that needs to be fixed. It really, really needs to be fixed. It is so bad. The trade logic. Oh, not only are like the trades bad, but just the the logic behind the CPU needing three first basemen or trading for an extra right fielder that they don't need. It just doesn't make any sense. It really, really doesn't. And yeah, so it was a little bit of an experiment, a little bit of a video to point out the flaws in trade logic and like how these trades just don't make sense. Yes, there were a couple more trades that happened when like the slider was up and also like ignore budgets was on but like it still shouldn't really change how an ai manages a team right there's no reason why they should trade away jason dominguez for like a 28 year old second baseman who doesn't really produce right or they shouldn't trade away a 30 uh, they shouldn't trade a 34 year old catcher for one of the top third base prospects in the game it just there the logic there just doesn't make sense relievers shouldn't be traded for top prospects it's just oof i don't i don't understand it so i hope you enjoyed the video if you did thumbs up down below subscribe to the channel for new owners of the content and of course get in the comment section let me know what you guys think about the trade logic just i don't know like obviously i'm not a developer i don't know how to fix it but something's wrong here and as a person who plays a lot of franchise i clearly want the game to be improved so there it is i hope you enjoyed it i'll catch you in the next one peace